Hey, it's Bruce with the Weeders Digest, and today we're looking at de-icing equipment. And if you've got a dock like I've got here, um, it certainly is not a dock that would be able to stand up to ice movement and ice pressure, and so the great opportunity is to be able to just take something like this, which is a half horsepower. It has a prop, and so uh, it's able to move water and clear an area around oh, up to 50 feet uh, across, and that's very dependent upon a lot of different uh, uh, factors, as you might imagine. It depends upon the flow, depends upon the uh, rate of, of uh, the water temperature, um, surface temperature, all those type of things. And ultimately, we can give you the advice you need, but it's the, the depth of the surrounding water, if obstructions in the water, and the geographic location. Those are all the things that we need to discuss. Now, it's very easy to put on, uh, to install one of these. Uh, in, in this case, I'm simply putting a, a rope on each end of the, uh, the area that I want to keep open on the dock post and then simply dropping it into the water. And you can see that, that uh, this is just a half horsepower. We sell them a half up to uh, you know, one horsepower, two horsepower. We have a lot of options when it comes to our de-icers and a number of different brands. But this is not where you would ever want to have that kind of flow. And, and the reason is, is that although that kind of uh, flow activity would certainly keep the water open in that area, ultimately what you do is be as low in the water as you can so that you can, uh, close to the bottom, where the earth is warming up that water down there and you're driving that water upward to be able to um, you know, keep and eat the ice, and it, it will. It'll literally eat the ice, and you get the other option is to have it a horizontal flow, um, and we'll look at some options there. Now, another great option is to be able to just literally take it, um, put it down on the bottom like you see right here. This would be more typical what you'd see on the surface, not that big flow, and so it comes up bringing the warm air upwards. Um, there are three different methods that we carry and that, that we recommend. Most often is the sling method is what I call and that's what you saw me do on the dock there, where you've got uh, this far left picture where you've got two ropes uh, you know, being supported across from uh, two piers or two docks or a slip or whatever the case might be. And then the second option is to be able to do a dock mount. Now, the dock mount can be going down much lower and then pointed upwards. In this case, I'm just showing it the flow across. And then the third option would be a float method. And with the float method, you don't, aren't down deep enough to bring up warm water, but you certainly can create water flow. So this would be just, you know, really, in my opinion, the third best option would be to set it up on a float. Now, another thing that people do is they will actually mount this down at the bottom where it's, that lake is not going to freeze, and they'll simply turn it on only in the spring at when the ice might start to move, and they let it freeze in in the wintertime and then just turn it on just only at that point. That's a great option because you don't have to run the power throughout the, the coldest months of the winter. Now, one of the other options is in a case like this, you don't want to have to use power throughout this whole season, so we carry a thermostat that will actually turn it on at a certain point of temperature. So you might set it at 28 degrees, so every time it reaches 28 degrees, it will turn on. That's a very inexpensive way to do it. And these are just showing the applications like where a waterfall might go in the top uh, photo there, otherwise typical docks and typical, typical marina setups. Give us a call at WeedersDigest.com. We'll talk to you about it and let you know all the different options and what would fit you best. Thank you.